Hey everyone, it's Tyler Michelle Stroik from Universal Rackets, and today we are going to teach you how to hit the two-handed topspin dink. Now, is the two-handed topspin dink an advanced shot? Yes, but does it have to be? No, it doesn't. Regardless of level, regardless of age, we're gonna teach how anyone can learn the two-handed topspin dink. Why do you wanna have a two-handed topspin dink, Michelle? So that you can have a more aggressive shot against your opponent and challenge them at the kitchen. You wanna think, when you're dinking on court, you wanna have a ton of tools in your tool belt. Just like you need a hammer, a saw, pliers, whatever. You need a slice dink, you need a push dink, you need an aggressive dink, and you need this two-handed topspin dink. Angle creates angle, you're going to be able to put more pressure on your opponent, and also topspin creates consistency. So if you stay tuned for this whole video, we're going to be teaching you step-by-step, step, regardless of any level, how to hit the two-handed topspin dink. I just wanna say, we really appreciate all of your support, all your views, all your likes, and all your subscribes. We are loving this YouTube recording together, aren't we? Yes, I feel like we were able to be exactly who we are as people, while also giving you quality coaching content. And there's nothing more than we love than to teach you guys how to play pickleball. And hey, when you're playing mixed doubles, they either call it divorce doubles or it makes you a really stronger couple. And uh, YouTube, we're figuring out to be the same. Now, we're getting a lot of questions about, hey, can you edit your videos? Can you put timestamps? Can you do all this stuff with, with your videos? Our goal is to monetize this channel to a certain amount that we can pay for professional editing. So make sure to subscribe, make sure to like the videos. The more you support, the more we monetize, and the more we can invest in our videos. And I can't wait for that. Sounds good. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's get started. Let's learn how to hit the two-handed topspin backhand dink. <laughs> So first off, if you're a little bit skeptical of, Tyler, why do I need the two-handed topspin backhand dink? I'm going to show you why. Instead of a normal dink shot where you just go here and try to pull them out wide, I can really angle the, the ball. So I can pull them out wide with tons of angle like that, and then I can go up the middle. That is why you want the two-handed topspin backhand dink. So the first thing that you have to do is if you are a right-handed player, you need your right hand on the bottom and your left hand on the top. If you're a left-hand player, you need your left hand on the bottom and right hand on the top. You need to get the proper grip. Now, how we get the proper grip, I want you to shadow it as well, you come over here, is when you do it, you want the paddle straight, like a continental grip, kind of like you're holding a hammer, you're hitting a nail. Then all you're going to do is you're going to stick it straight out with your bottom hand, and then you're going to put your top hand on top, right on top of it. Now, for your top hand, all you're going to do is tilt the paddle a tiny bit down. Now this paddle tilt is what creates topspin, guys. By tilting the paddle, it's going to help you get under and brush the ball, which creates topspin. So again, straight out, like you're holding a hammer, then you're going to put your top hand on, and then you're going to tilt the paddle face down a tiny bit. Now, once we get the proper grip, we're going to get started in the rep. So the first thing that I want you to do, Michelle, is when you're hitting your two-handed topspin dink, I just want you to get used to holding the paddle and hitting with two hands. So right now, if you're just learning, you've never done the shot before, don't care where you go with it. Ooh, that was beautiful, just like you today. <laughs> but just worry about getting the feel of two hands. No expectations, miss it, make it, in the kitchen, whatever. Who cares? Just use two hands and try to get that feel. Good. And okay, so Michelle's been working on this shot a lot for the past couple days, right? Because we tried to record this YouTube video a couple of times. But if you're new to the game, it'll probably look something like this, and that's perfectly fine. So Michelle's doing it more advanced. I'm doing it what someone might be when they pick up the paddle and Whoops. start learning it. Maybe not right there, all right? So but that was me trying to brush up on the ball. Yes, so again, the first thing to do is to just get used to having two hands. Now, after we get used to having two hands on the paddle and making contact with the ball, the next thing is you need to make sure that you finish up. A lot of players, when they're starting out, if they're new to dinking with two hands on their backhand side, they're going to start stopping the paddle. And if you wanna get this top spin, you need to make sure you accelerate on the paddle. And that's a problem that you were having, right? Mm -hmm. So every single time that you're done, you wanna finish with your paddle up. You can't finish all the way across your body because we're at the kitchen. You don't have time like your back of the baseline. Mm -hmm. But I want you to think that once you're done, the tip of the paddle is always pointing up in the air. Again, I'm gonna finish and the tip of the paddle is going to be pointing up in the air. That's also really good if someone is able to speed up your ball, you're right in your ready position to counter. Yes. 
Because if you're here, it's going to be too slow. If you cross your body, it's probably going to go into the net anyway. But if you're up here, you're ready to counter. So we're going to go, we're going to do the exact same thing, and we're going to finish with the paddle tip facing up. Ready? Let's go. Finish with the paddle tip up. Paddle tip up. Good. Paddle tip up. Paddle tip up. This is insinuating me going low to high. Once again, low to high. Low to high. Low too high, let it fly. Good. How's it feeling? Great, actually. Good. So we utilize our two hands. Now we're finishing with our paddle tip pointing up. Uh -huh. And now what we're going to start to do is get into what hand does all the work. Your left hand. My left hand because I'm a right-handed player. And if you're a left hand? It's your right hand. Yes, okay. The top hand does all the work. I want you to think the left hand does the talking, the right hand does the walking if you're a right-handed player. If you're lefty, the right hand does the talking, the left hand does the walking. All a two-handed backhand, and especially for the top spin dink, is a left-handed forehand. Now this does everything. It makes such a big difference when you're playing pickleball. So when you do it, I want you to utilize your top hand. This is how you create top spin, guys. This is how you're going to be able to pull your opponent off of the court. So again, when I do this two-handed top spin dink, I am not using my bottom hand. All that I'm doing is I'm utilizing my top hand when I hit. So first off, we said what? Two hands. Second off, we said finish up. Now I want you to think what makes it go from point A to point B is your top hand, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm utilizing my top hand. If I take the paddle away from my hands, take it out of my hands, Michelle. Here, I'm going to take it out. <laughs> Here, look. This is what's happening, okay? I like to say it's like a sideways wave. You're gonna to wave to someone, then you're going to tilt your hand to the side, and then you're going to go up. This is going to teach you that feeling. Low to high top spin's also great if they have the top spin pro at home. Ooh, link in the description. Yeah, I'll feed them to you. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> okay, so now what we're going to do is when we do it again, I'm going to just feel my top spin top hand, okay? And I think we switched paddles, that's okay. Oh. Here we are. <laughs> Let's go. So I'm using my top hand. Again, I'm finishing up and making sure that when I point the tip of my paddle, my top hand is doing the work to get from point A to point B. One more thing that I would like to bring up that I didn't bring up before is look at my backswing, okay? If you come from a tennis or racket sport background, you're probably going to take the paddle back like this. Guys, when we're at the kitchen, we don't have time. I'm going to take it out in front of me and then finish up with the left hand. Finish up. When you're hitting topspin, forehand or backhand, you wanna look for the ball making rotational movement so that it's diving into the court. That's the point of brushing off the back of the ball. You wanna see the ball spinning. And by utilizing that left hand, it brushes the back of the ball. Can you come over here real quick? I wanna show the viewers of it. Hold the ball straight out this way, okay? Straight out this way, okay? Um, I have something to say though about this press one ball. When you look through it, you can see to the other side, which offers perfect flight on court. Now, back to the- <laughs> Thank you, Michelle, video. for throwing all of our affiliate links in. Could you extend <laughs> so I don't whack you with the ball? If you keep on throwing these random links, I might just, I just do it. it's cool you can see right through accent. the ball. Okay, so here we are. That's so amazing, okay? So when I do it, right, if I don't use my topspin, I'm going to come around the ball. Top spin means I'm brushing up the back of the ball. I am going from south to north. I'm going from six to 12. Six o'clock's down here, 12 o'clock's up here. And when we get that editor, because we monetized our channel, we're gonna be showing you like a clock right there. It's gonna be like, bing, bing, can't wait. Start from the, the bottom, I, now we're here. I could be the editor. No, I don't want you to. You have to do other things, okay? I do so, a lot of things to do. We're gonna be there. straight out. You're gonna extend. You're maybe gonna hold it this way. So don't like kill your hand. Maybe not. You're gonna hold it this maybe way. If you had the top spin and pro. what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my top hand, okay? So again, I'm going to go from six to 12. By using my top hand, that makes me brush up the back of the ball rather than coming around the ball. So a great self drill. You can go back over there. A great self drill that you can do is you can bounce the ball twice. I like to bounce the ball twice because if you bounce it once and you do two hands, you don't have enough time. So I'm going to catch this for me and then toss back. I'm going to bounce the ball two times, right? One, two, and then I'm going to use my top hand and hit in the kitchen. Hopefully you have a beautiful woman on the other side catching the balls for you and giving it to you. 
one, two, and then I'm going to use my top hand. A couple more. And I'm trying to get that arc on the ball. I don't want it to go forward. I want it to go over and dive in. So again, one, two, and use the top hand. Top spin's incredible on pickleball too because the court is so small. You only have so much space to use. So if you can find top spin in your game, you're able to use more accuracy in your shots. Top spin is like insurance, right? It gives you more likelihood of getting the ball in. It adds so much more margin to your shots, guys. You guys need this top spin, especially on this top spin. Day. Can you tell everyone what margin means? Margin means you have more of a chance to make the shot and less of a chance to miss the shot, okay? So now what we're going to do is another drill that you can do with your partner is you're literally going to use your non-dominant hand. As I mentioned, the two-hand dink is a left-handed forehand. So when I swing, you're going to dink with me, oh. and I'm going to use my non-dominant hand. Now this is gonna be weird, you're probably gonna miss it. Again, just like when we started with hitting two hands, it does not matter what happens with the ball that you're just getting that feeling. Now once I do that again, I'm gonna put two hands on. I could do one off and then one on. Here we are, so I can alternate. Here we are, let's do it again. So again, I'm gonna do one off and then I'm gonna do one on if you can make it. Here we are, keep it going. There we are, one off. One on, like that. Another drill that you can do as well is you can swing, and then once you're done swinging, you can wave to your subscribers. Hey guys, so again, I'm gonna swing, and then I'm going to wave and take my bottom hand off. This is gonna teach me to do my top hand as well. Do you remember what I used to call this uh, tip back in uh, clinics? The Beyonce tip, remember? Put a ring on it. I remember you hate this tip, that's why. You hate, I would, talk to everyone that I was coaching and be like, Beyonce, like you put a ring on it, right? Mm -hmm. No? All right, let's go, here we are. Just a little bit embarrassing, babe. All right, here we are, let's go, right? So you go swing, Beyonce, do your ring dance. Again, I'm gonna swing, Beyonce, do the ring dance. You get dance into it too. Be drilling with your pickleball followers or your pickleball partners, right? You go out in warm-ups and you're doing this and you're dancing after every single shot. They're gonna be like, what's, go what's wrong with you today? And you're gonna be like, I was watching Universal Rackets video on the two-handed topspin dink and Tyler was teaching me this cool dance. If you do it, you might actually be able to hit topspin. So those are the drills that you can do and it will teach you to utilize your top hand. Now what we're going to do is we are going to put it all together. So we are going to what? We are going to have two hands on the paddle, straight ahead, tilt a little bit. We are going to make sure we finish up and again, we are going to use our non dominant hand. Now we are putting all three tips together and then if you stay tuned I'm going to give you one more tip that's going to put the cherry and the sprinkles on top. Let's go. Here we are. Actually I'm going to give you two tips. By just doing that one Sorry. I thought about another tip that will help you guys. Let's get into that now actually. So after we put all three together I want you to think that I have to get under the ball to go low to high, right? How can I ensure that I get under the ball more? I can drop my legs. By dropping my center of gravity, it's going to allow me to get under the ball, ball more so I can get up. So by pushing in the ground with my body and then off the ground, that's going to really help me brush up on the back of the ball. Again, I wanna use my left hand. The difference between a drive and a dink, feed me two balls, okay? I'm going to show you guys a drive and a dink, okay? Here's a drive, return, ground stroke. And then the second one's gonna be a dink. I'm gonna hit the drive straight ahead, okay? Do you want a dink? Drive, here we are, hit me, me a dr dink so I can drive. Here we are, right, drive. Oh, try it again. Second time's the charm. Okay, now let's do the dink. What is the difference? The difference is on the drive, I'm swinging more forward, and on the dink, I'm swinging more up. The more up you swing, the less distance, but the more arc you'll have, the more forward you swing, the more power and distance that you'll cover. So if I ever miss super long on my two-handed top spin dinks, I need to swing more up. If I ever hit the ball in the net on my two-handed top spin dinks, what does that mean? See if you're listening. Uh, I need to go more forward. <sighs> Come on. No, you have to get under the ball. Anything. So if listening. you have a ball, <laughs> <laughs> and it's going long, I was that means I'm swinging too much forward like you just said. So that means I have to swing up. But if I ever hit a ball in the net 
That means what do I need to do? I need to get under the ball. And how can I get under the ball? I can make sure I can drop my paddle and I can get into Do you have a tip for anyone who has legs. a hard time dropping their paddle as I have my whole entire yes. life so on this planet? Yes, so dropping the paddle will allow you to get under the ball more. And what is a paddle drop? All a paddle drop is, is loosening up my grip, okay? By dropping my paddle, that's going to allow my paddle tip to face down so I can come up on the ball. So if you ever struggle with dropping your paddle, just like you said, Michelle, yes. what you're going to do is you're going to hold your paddle loose. Guys, watch. If I hold the paddle super tight, I'm not going to be able to get under the ball. I need to hold the paddle so loose that I can drop the tip and get under it. Let's try that again. So what do I have to do? If I hit it in the net, I quiz you guys, I need to get more under the ball, okay? So by dropping your paddle again, it's going to allow the tip of your paddle face down so then you can lift the ball up in the air. Now, if you still struggle with loosening your drop and getting that drop, again, here, look, if I'm holding the paddle tight, I'm holding it loose, tight, loose, okay? I want you to think that the tip of your paddle is weighted. So the tip of your paddle is super weighted, super heavy. So the moment that you release, it's gonna fall down, right? So again, you wanna think that's heavy and weighted, drop and then come up with your left hand. Michelle was struggling the other day with the drop, and what did we do? We had you start in the drop. Let's give them the biggest tip ever that you gave me yesterday as well. So I started in the drop position to get under the ball, but before I even got to that tip that you and coaching that you had to give me, it was if you continually mess up on the same thing 15 times, you have to make an adjustment. Yes, yes, yes. Come over here. This is so valuable and so important. So real quick, before we get into the in drop, this is good. Guys, regardless of what you do in pickleball, if you make the same mistake over three times, you need to do something different. You never want to make the same mistake three strikes in a row. So for example, in purposes of this video, if you miss your backhand dink three times in a game in the net, do something different so that you're missing it way Hit it to high the moon. over the net. Send it to get, outer get space. Get smashed on but find an adjustment. Yeah, and it's all about making adjustments. So if you miss, that's okay. If you miss twice, that's okay. But the third time, do something different, okay? If your opponent smashes the ball at you every single time, maybe hit it to the other person. If you hit the ball in the net, maybe hit it long, right? If you miss three times in the net, and then you attempt hitting long two times, you're eventually gonna find the happy medium. So always make adjustments in pickleball, and as well with your two-handed top spin dink. And what did we tell you? If the ball goes in net, you have to get under it. If it goes long, you need to come up. Let's keep on going into the drop, okay? okay. So when I drop the paddle, what Michelle was struggling with, I'm gonna start her in the drop, okay? So instead of being here for drilling purposes, we're gonna do exercise where Whoops. my paddle is down already and I'm going to come up. So again, I'm gonna start with the drop and I'm going to finish up with my top hand. Woo! Drop and finish up. Drop and finish up. Good. And this, by starting in this abbreviated spot, it's going to force you to drop. Now, clearly, once you get good with that, then you can put it all together. So you want to think out in front, drop up. 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 Yep. And that's what you can do. Oh! <laughs> Ow! <laughs> It was too tempting. Ow. I'm sorry, What the babe. heck? I love you. Ow. I wasn't aiming for that. Oh my gosh. It was too juicy. Oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be just fine, babe. <laughs> it didn't hurt that bad. Okay, so now, once we do that, and once we do the drop, now we have to talk about one more thing, and that is acceleration, okay? A lot of players, they think, oh, I need to work on this. I'm learning all this stuff. My muscle memory's trying to register it. And they end up tightening up because they either want to kill the ball at their opponents and hit them just like Michelle did to me right there. They're either thinking about the score, thinking about what they're going to have for lunch later today. Maybe, I don't thinking know. Thinking about their kids. But that are thinking about their kids the when you're trying to record a YouTube video and their parents are at, at like back to school night or grandparents or whatever, and they're bringing them over and you don't want them to because you're telling them that you're doing a YouTube video. I mean, that too. But if you're not one of those, or if you are thinking, you need to hold the paddle super loose and you need to accelerate. In pickleball, to gain control, you have to... Give up control. 
the more you let the paddle work for you and the less you work for the paddle, the better it's going it's to be. It's kind of like a knife. When you're cutting food, you have to let the knife do the work. Or yoga or think of like anything, right? If it's music, if it's yoga, you can't do yoga going like, oh, no, you got to be super loose. You got to let it go, right? You need to let it go in pickleball. And if you don't let it go, I want you to think of me singing, let it go. So save this recording right now and let it go, let it go, right? And think about me singing if you don't let the paddle go, okay? So what I mean by that, go back over there, is acceleration, okay? You're not going to get spin if you don't achieve acceleration. So top spin equals acceleration, okay? So this is what I don't want you to do, okay? You're thinking about, again, your grandparents bringing the kids, your parents or whatever, and you're ah, super tight trying to get it in. Think about getting it in, right? No, you need to let it go. You need to accelerate. The more you can let this paddle go, Look at that top spin that I'm hitting. Now we gotta crawl before we walk, right? So we gotta do all the other drills before. But the more I let it go, See, I went around. the better it is going to be and the more I'll achieve consistency. So you need to hold your paddle loose, you need to go for it. And one last tip is you need to exhale when you hit. You wanna inhale, exhale. Inhale in the take back, exhale forward. Inhale, exhale, Ah, oh, come on. So what do I do? I hit in the net, I have to get under it. Inhale, ah, too high, so I need to go up more. Okay, so I went two up. So this is a perfect example that like we just said. I hit what? I hit the first one too high, then I tried to come up more and I went two in the net. So I'm gonna keep on going back and forth until I get it. I'm exhaling when I hit, right? So I'm exhaling, exhale. Ooh! Beautiful. I'd say that's in. Yeah, I couldn't pull it out. And then you get the middle and then you win the point, right? Okay, so you need to accelerate once you utilize these tips. You need to let it go. Here's the big thing. When you go for it, it cannot be in a match play competitive situation. This is why we stress drilling so much. You need to drill when you have tons of balls, a beautiful partner who whacks you with the ball when you're not looking, and- Do you have a mark? Yeah, I think I do. Ooh! <laughs> yeah, and then, um, yeah, I lost what I said because I was annoyed at that. And, uh, Don't yeah. do it while you're in a match. Do it while, while you're in a match or when you're, again, kids are coming. No, no, we have the green light to finish the video. Oh, I'm so glad. Our video is like two hours long, tell them. Well, maybe it might be if we keep on going. But guys, utilize these tips, utilize these skills, subscribe, share to your friends, hit a two hand backspin uh, or top spin dink like we just taught you, and make sure you drill with it over and over and over again so you can get the confidence to accelerate in a match play setting. If you want some amazing pickleball paddles, make sure to click the link in the description for a promo Wait, code ADV that's universal. I just filmed how I tape my Labs 006 to look like white, crisp, fresh, and clean. So that will be posted soon on our channel. Yes, and guys, seriously, this is so awesome. Everyone DMs us and messages, oh, what edge guard? How did you get your paddle white? It's normally red, like what do you buy? Guys, we will tell you, it's like how, how much Electrical does it cost? Tape, Electrical tape. Electrical tape, it's a couple dollars. And if you watch her video, she's gonna teach you how to make you your make paddle any edge. Color, any color that you want, customize it so it looks so beautiful. So it matches my watch and my Nike sneakers. Yeah, I need to make mine red so it'll match my uh, welt. And then, um, yeah, make sure to subscribe, follow, and share with your friends. Have going, happy hitting, hit these two hand top spin dinks, go for it. It doesn't matter if it is advanced shot, we're here to make pickleball for you simple. If you want any type of universal rackets program in your area, you want a corporate event, fundraiser, charity event, special event, whatever you want, click the link in the description. Universal Rackets represented. We'll get out to you shortly. See you next time. Happy hitting.